Happy Tuesday. I hope you're enjoying this B-E-A beautiful day. Um, we are start of reading chapter two of Lun Lions at Lunchtime. So not two, three, day two, chapter three. Disaster. Ugh. Come on, Jack, Annie called. She was almost to the river. Just a minute, he shouted. He wanted to study the giraffes and zebras. He pulled out the Africa book and found a picture of giraffes. He read, the giraffe is the tallest animal in the world. Its legs can, can be six feet tall, and its hooves can be as big as dinner plates. The giraffe was, or sorry, has, a very powerful kick, which makes it dangerous to attack. For this reason, lions tend to avoid giraffes. Jack pulled out his notebook and wrote notes on Africa. Lions avoid giraffes. He turned his page and read more. Zebras live in family groups, as no two zebras have exactly the same pattern of stripes. Every baby zebra must learn its own mother's pattern. Jack studied the zebras, trying to see their different patterns. But in the hazy afternoon sunlight, all the stripes made him dizzy. He blinked to clear his head, then read more. Zebras are the first to cross the river because they eat the coarsest grass. After they have thinned down the crop layer, the wildebeest arrive and eat the next layer. The pre the they prepare the grass for the gazelles to come last. Wow, thought Jack. Each animal depends on the one that goes before. He wrote, all animals are connected. Jack heard Annie shouting from the river. Jump, beast, jump! You can do it! Don't be afraid! Come on! He looked up. Annie herself was jumping as she called to the wildebeest. Jack sighed. I'd better stop her before there's trouble, he thought. He put away the Africa book and his notebook. Then he jogged towards the river. His back was heavy and lumpy. Oh, sorry, his pack, not his back. His pack was heavy and lumpy, bumping against his back. He'd forgotten to take out the jar of peanut butter and the loaf of bread. Jack decided to leave them in the treehouse. He turned to go back. But just then, Annie's shouting stopped. Jack looked at the river. She had vanished. Annie! No answer. Where was she? Annie! Jack shouted. She had completely disappeared. Oh, man, said Jack. Their trip had barely begun and already disaster had struck. He forgot about the stuff in his pack. He just ran as fast as he could. He wove his way between the gazelles, zebras, giraffes as he raced to the river. Help, called Annie. Uh-oh, you're right. This is a disaster. Chapter four, mud bath. Oh, no. Jack looked over the edge of the riverbed. Annie had fallen into a pool of mud near the water. The thick black mud was up to her chest. I slipped, she said. It feels like quicksand. Jack threw down his pack and got to his knees. Be careful, said Annie. Don't slip too. Jack pointed to the tangle of old tree roots. Sticking out of the bank. Grab those, he said. Annie reached for the roots. Too far, she said, breathing hard. I'm sinking. She was sinking. The mud was up to her neck. Hold on, Jack looked around wildly. He saw a fallen tree branch near the bank. He raced to it, picked it up, and carried it back to Annie. Only her head and arms stuck out of the mud now. Jack held out the branch. Annie grabbed it. Hold tight, he said. I'll drag you over the roots, over to the roots. He started pulling on the branch. I'm still sinking, Annie wailed. The mud was up to her chin. Come on, said Jack. You have to do it. I know you can. Try, try. Just then, Jack heard a splash. He looked up on the other side of the wide river. The wildebeest had jumped into the water and another jumped, then another. They were heading right towards Jack and Annie. Hold on tight, said Jack. He pulled on the stick again. Annie moved a tiny bit. Hey, Jack, on the moon, on the moon, it felt like... I weighed 10 pounds, said Annie. And in this thick mud, it feels like I weigh a ton. Concentrate, Annie, said Jack, trying not to slip down the bank. 
I am. The lead wildebeest was halfway across, swimming towards them. Many more wildebeests were jumping into the water. It's now or never, said Jack. He took a deep breath. He pulled really hard. Just then, a shadow passed over them. Jack looked up. Uh-oh, he said. A huge vulture circled overhead. It thinks you're near to the end, said Jack. Oh, get out of here. Annie shouted at the vulture. I'm fine. In a burst of fury, she let go of the branch. She lunged for the roots. She grabbed them. Yes, cried Jack. Pull, pull. Slowly, Annie pulled herself out. She was covered with the black mud from head to toe. Jack helped her onto the bank, getting mud all over himself, too. See? Annie shook her fist at the vulture. I'm fine. Now beat it. But the giant ugly bird still circled. Come on, let's get away from him, said Jack. He pushed his glasses into place. Wrapped, he said. Now his glasses were muddy. He tried to clean his hands in the grass. Oh no, shouted Annie. Jack turned to her. The wildebeest will get stuck in the mud hole, she cried. She waved her arms the wildebeest at the wildebeest, struggling to swim across the river. Not here, she shouted, not here. But the frantic swimmers kept coming. That's the end of chapter four, so we'll have to wait to find out to what happens tomorrow. I hope you are having a wonderful Tuesday. I am going to go take my dogs for a walk to get out and enjoy the sunset shine. Um, I will see you tomorrow so we can continue reading chapters five and six, and I hope you have a good day. Bye-bye.